good evening ladies and gentlemen we're glad that you're with us tonight i've been asked to remind you to please turn off your cell phones or your beepers while we are here in concert we hope that you will enjoy tonight's concert the golden west international symphonic band and maestro tom hernandez welcome you to our annual spring concert my name is irene cohen and i am also a band member tonight i've been given this exciting assignment to guide you through tonight's music i hope you will enjoy this music as much as i will enjoy commenting about each piece this evening we have an array of beautiful music which i'm sure you will enjoy from opera overtures to ragtime to marches. Come join us as we begin tonight's concert. We begin with the procession of nobles, the procession of nobles by Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov. This Russian composer was born into a wealthy family in 1844. He died in 1908. He was not only a composer, but a music teacher as well. You've heard some of his music, like Scheherazade, Capriccio Espanol, and the Russian Easter Overture. Some of his students also became great Russian composers, like Prokofiev and Stravinsky. The music tonight, The Procession of the Nobles, is from an opera ballet, Melda. The opera ballet is based on a subject taken from a Slavonic mythology. Of all the composers in Russia, it is said that Rimsky-Korsakov was the Russian who dared to write happy music. Listen for the heralding trumpets announcing the arrival of <coughs> noblemen. Okay. The Golden West International Symphonic Band and Maestro Tom Hernandez. Thank you. 
next number is The Ride of the Valkyries. The composer is a German composer, Richard Wagner. This music is from the second of four operas from The Ring of the Nibbler. This is a massive work with interrelated plots which are very involved and complex. The Valkyries were nine daughters of Wotan, ruler of the heaven and earth, and his wife, Erda, <coughs> the goddess of fate. Wotan employs his daughters to gather the fallen heroes from the battlefield. The ride of the Valkyries takes place at the beginning of Act Three, as the Valkyries return from the battlefields. You can imagine the scene as you hear the music. The Valkyries carrying the fallen warriors on horseback while storms subside and lightning flashes vividly. Listen for the light motif, which represents the Valkyries. It sounds like this. <laughs> motif as you hear this music. I'll help you with the first one. Okay? Here we go. Thank you. 
So, how did you do? How many times did you hear it? Anybody? Fifteen. <laughs> how many? Fifteen times? Thirteen times. Oh my goodness. Well, you heard parts of it. You heard parts of the theme, you know, but they weren't all complete. So how many was it? Who said it? Yes! <laughs> I think you got a hint from somebody. <laughs> okay, you're good listeners. As we continue, our next number is a fun number for us. We hope you enjoy it as well. This is a familiar tune and one you've heard since you were a child. The tune was written several years before the American Revolution. The war word origins of Yankee Doodle Dandy are interesting but a bit confusing. Because where did the word Yankee come from? Well, they say that it was derived from the mispronunciation of Native Americans of the word Yinglish. They used to say Yinglish. And from Yingish came Yankees, would you believe? I don't know. Uh, doodle, as found in an old uh, English dictionary, meant a sorry, trifling fellow, a fool or a simpleton. Dandy is a description of a gentleman of good manners, impeccable dress and hairstyle. And so it basically comes to this. Yankee Doodle is a comic song, a parody. Actually, the British made fun of ragtag American militiamen by playing Yankee Doodle. Still, the tune has survived as one of America's endearing, although humorous, national airs. Would you believe that John Philip Sousa used this tune in many of his marches? I think he would be really pleased hearing this arrangement of Yankee Doodle. such as a nationalistic ideal. This is a work based on Manx folk song. The Isle of Man 
which is where this music is from, is an island in Western Europe in the Irish Sea between Great Britain and Ireland. There are four tunes in this music from this island, The Good Old Way, The Manx Fiddler, Sweet Water in the Common, and the last tune is a hymn, The Harvest of the Sea, sung by the fishermen giving thanks after their safe return from the fishing grounds. Let's listen.
developments like the automobile, the radio, and sound motion pictures were in their infancy and naturally contributed to the excitement and jubilance of the day. Post-World War I, return to normalcy was more of a call to stay out all night and party. It was a time of all-night speakeasies and of glistening New Empire State Building, the New York Yankees, of Bessie Smith and the Duke Ellington, of course, and Carla Bow and Jimmy Cagney. Men in raccoon coats and baggy pants escorted women in knee-length dresses with feather boas and cloche hats. Fashion was all important, and fads came quickly as they went, but no one seemed to care. Life was just too good to have many cares. New York 1927 is a musical snapshot of this colorful and merry time. The opening, Ragtime, depicts the prosperous and carefree spirit of the times. Blues rhapsodies wistfully and whimsically in the Roaring Twenties fashion. Manhattan Mayhem cleverly creates a typical busy street scene at a midtown intersection, perhaps Fifth Avenue and 34th Street. After this music, we'll have a brief intermission. Get some punch or coffee and cookies for a small fee. But now, let's listen to this music. Thank you. 
Welcome back. You've been a wonderful audience. Let's continue our musical journey for tonight. Maestro. <coughs> Golden West International Symphonic Band is ready to present to you the second half of the concert. This march that we're going to hear was composed by Julius Fusik, who lived from 1872 to 1916. This composer served as a bandmaster to the 86th Hungarian <coughs> Infantry Regiment. During his short but brilliant career, he lived a short 45 years. He wrote 240 pieces. His music has lived on, and several of his marches have been adopted as signature tunes by organizations as diverse as Barnum and Bailey Circus, the World Weightlifting Federation, and the German Army. This march became the signature tune for Barnum's Circus. As you hear this music, you can imagine the parade of tumblers, jugglers, acrobats, and clowns and animals going around the big ring before the circus performance. Okay, then. section. This is Steve Hess. He will play a beautiful <coughs> melodic musical work written by John J. Morrissey called Nightfall.
A selection from Bizet's Carmen. This opera was set in Spain and was first presented in, 19, in 1875 in Paris. It was not a success at first, but eventually became one of the most popular operas of all time. There have been many versions and resurrections of Carmen on stage, on screen, and even on ice. To this day, Carmen is often claimed to represent the pure, unmistakable spirit of Spain. The opera is about the gypsy girl, Carmen, who throws a flower at a soldier, Don Jose. She works at a cigarette factory and gets in a fight with other girls and ends up in prison. Don Jose happens to be her guard, and they both escape. In the course of the opera, she dumps Don Jose for a uh, bullfighter. Don Jose gets jealous, of course, and gets his revenge by, unfortunately, stabbing Carmen. The opera ends with Don Jose singing J'attends, or I love you, in French, to the dying Carmen. So I'm sure you've heard this music before. The themes are very familiar. So let's listen.
Andy Smith, Tim Shedlin, Joe Ardinger, Freddie De Leon, uh, Carla. Carla plays and solos too. Thank you. That was beautiful. Didn't you just feel like saying ole and ole? That was wonderful music here. Okay, wonderful. Okay, the next piece we're doing is from the musical Ragtime. This was first performed on Broadway in January, just recently, 1998. It is based on a book, Ragtime, by Terence McNally. The story takes place in the beginning of the century. Ragtime is a tale of three types of people in New Rochelle, New York. It's about an upper middle class family with its scenario of wealth, a Harlem community where they dance to the music of Cole House Walker Jr., and an immigrant named Tata and his daughter. What happens in this story is the intertwining of all the families at some point in the show. Someone once said that a great show leaves you humming the tunes after on the way home. This music accomplishes that. Let's listen to this memorable music from Ragtime.
soloists are Sarah Brown, Carla on clarinet, Meryl on trombone, Jordan and Jerry on trumpet, Andy on the tuba. On Wheels of the Dream, Steve Hess on the alto sax. Thank you, soloists and band. Well done. Hoagie Carmichael has often been described as the voice of America's heartland. His best known songs are now American standards. Stardust, one of the pieces we'll hear, Georgia on my mind, and Heart and Soul, another one we'll hear. He wrote hundreds of songs, and his career lasted for four decades. Carmichael was born in 1899 in Bloomington, Indiana. It wasn't until the 40s that his career exploded. In 1951, he co-wrote with uh, Johnny Mercer in the cool, cool, cool of the evening, which you'll hear tonight as well. He received an Academy Award for this very song. His fame faded in the 50s when popular music was changing and the beat heavy rock and roll and rhythm and blues filled the airwaves. He died in 1981 and was laid to rest in the place he considered home, Indiana.
That's just wonderful, isn't it? That was Ruben Hernandez on the trombone, Tim Shevlin trumpet, Randy Smith flute, and I think I heard Polly in there too. Polly on the French horn. Thank you. Thank you, my Israel soloist and band. Johann Strauss I, he lived from 1804 to 1849, was the son of an innkeeper. He was largely self-taught as a musician. He developed the waltz in the form and style we hear today. He wrote 251 works, among them 153 waltzes, the most famous of which is The Sound of the Rhine Lorelei, written in 1843. He was the only member of the Strauss family to write more waltzes than any other type of music, and his most famous work is the one you'll hear tonight called The Radesky March, written in 1848. It is a march that is well recognized in Europe. If you feel like it, clap right along with the band. Thank you. 